happening guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video we're going to be checking out for today's throwback review the Transformers animated deluxe class lockdown an original character for the show but one that was so loved that he made it into the live action movies being the main antagonist of Transformers Age of Extinction and hands down the best live action movie villain we ever saw and also one of the best villains from an animated TV show so here we have lockdown as he comes packaged in his vehicle mode and I think even by today's standards this thing looks absolutely nuts it looks killer I mean it's got serrated edges scattered all the way throughout it I mean you see this thing and I actually think it could probably take you down even in vehicle mode it just looks so cool we get these massive serrated blades here at the front of the vehicle we even have some here on the roof so you know maybe if he runs you over and you topple onto the hood then you impale yourself and then there you go you're dead we also get some massive spikes flaring out of the side of the wheels which again you know perhaps he skims you on the side road and whoosh, he takes your kneecaps clean out so really heavy duty looking vehicle and as we come around to the back check out that serrated details we have here for the rear spoiler sick looking details for those tail lights and as we come to the underside not too much obvious robot mode junk i mean we get the chest but that's what you would expect from modern transformers and we get these triple exhaust sticking out of both sides with the massive engine block which also doubles as the nicked emp that he stole from ratchet so definitely such a sick looking vehicle and trust me guys this thing may look you know average size in vehicle mode but he's about to get a whole lot bigger when we get him into the robot mode and i also think that this design was so badass that hasbro took it for the revenge of the fallen toy line and basically gave it the live action movie treatment and that figure looks god tier so definitely be sure to stay tuned to a throwback review for that figure sometime shortly i'm hoping but as it stands here's animated lockdown and looking really cool now as far as features go you can technically take this emp and kind of pre-activate it i don't think it's intention for this mode but there's a tiny little button which we can push and it will cause these cannons to flip forwards on this spring-loaded mechanism and then we can just smack it back into the hood of the vehicle and I guess he can be firing down some water bots when in battle. Now considering this is a stolen weapon, if he never took this from Ratchet, then would the vehicle mode always look like this? I'm not too sure. Let me know down in the comment section below. But we're going to jump into some comparisons and who better to start with other than Lockdown based on Transformers Age of Extinction. Now personally, I don't think in live action the vehicle quite translated as well as the robot mode. I mean this was a Lamborghini so a massive departure when in comparison to this kind of Mad Max looking thing that we may or may not have got a brief glimpse of in the latest Legacy Evolution poster. I guess only time's going to tell on that one, but they're both deluxe figures. This, I think, came out in 2018, whereas this was a 2008-2009 release. And in vehicle mode, I mean, I've got to give it to them. They're basically on par with each other. There really isn't that much in the scale at all. This version is slightly smaller, but like I said, when we get into robot mode, it is a whole different story. I really don't know what Hasbro are thinking as far as scale went for these animated figures, but here for another comparison, we have him next to the Bumblebee movie Voyager Class Optimus Prime, which I've turned into a nice cute truck for a future studio series review so be sure to stay tuned for that but as you guys can see definitely pretty sizable and then finally we're going to compare him alongside the Transformers animated Voyager class Optimus Prime and scale wise I'd say they're pretty much exactly the same and in terms of the amount of plastic Lockdown's actually feeling a little heavier so like I said really and truly what was scale back in 2008-2009 but let's jump into the transformation and it's actually pretty straightforward so to kickstart things off with you are going to want to remove the engine block I mean technically you could leave it fixed into place but you're going to need it for a weapon anyhow so let's just wriggle this piece off and set it off to the side we can then come here to the rear of the vehicle and just begin detaching these sections now nine times out of ten this side always wants to pop off on me so if it does don't get worried as you can see it just literally flies off so I mean kind of recreating his death scene from Transformers 4 where he's split into two pieces we're just going to set this here off to the side for now as it's just literally just going to fly here there and everywhere you're then going to want to take this center piece lift this up we can then flip this forward and a piece of engineering which I love is taking this portion and extending it that's just so cool very simple yet effective we can then take this piece which was the front part of the vehicle and and it will simply just snap there into place and a very simple conversion here for the legs so you basically just took this part which will become the front of the foot and then fold this section up and those are basically the legs transformed so do the same for the opposite side and reattach it if it detaches and then we can move up here to the top so take the torso rotate this here all the way around so the nice shiny green pieces are facing forwards we can then take the arms detach those bring those down and then we can just angle these sections down just like that 
come back here to the front, pull the chest piece forwards. Now this can be a little tricky to do, pulling the head out of this cavity, but just slide that out, snap that into place. We can then take the shoulder pads. Again, some sick looking serrated edges on those. And then just rotate the forearms around, flip out the hands. And trust me, I have a few comments about these in just a second and do the same here on the opposite side. And before we wrap up with the transformation, I mean, technically you could leave this massive butt flap on him, but let's be honest, he's got a lot of junk in the trunk. Let's remove it and turn it into its weapon. So I'm going to give this a pass for parts forming as technically you don't need to remove it for transformation, but just slide it off and it will become his weapon in just a second anyhow. But there is the Transformers animated deluxe class lockdown. And this figure is huge. My goodness me. In this robot mode, I mean, I was going to say he'd class as a modern Voyager, but honestly, guys, I'm thinking more along the lines of a modern leader class. He is so big by today's standards. And I can't even remember the last time we got a deluxe class that was this big in terms of robot mode scale and not to mention this accurate these animated figures literally were in a league of their own i mean just check out that robot mode deluxe design compared alongside the actual design they used for the show it's uncanny they literally look like they're the same so amazing design team that used to work on these animated figures but as we jump into the details there we have that lockdown head sculpt and i'm trying to make out what i think of it to me it kind of looks like this mechanized spiky slug i just see that with the neck piece i'm sorry for those of you who don't see it but it definitely does kind of remind me of a slug but so mean and menacing this is a lockdown which is worthy of going up against optimus prime i mean check out those serrated spikes we have here for the neck and the detailing on the face just looks so cool love the design for the chest now he has a decepticon logo i'm not sure if this is accurate i know he's a bounty hunter i didn't think he was specifically aligned with the decepticon so maybe they just slapped a faction symbol on for the sake of the toy but very nice serrated edges here for the shoulders and he has this kind of creepy spindly design you know the legs are very long the arms are very long but it just works i mean he does just look so scary now as we come here to the forearms you can see some nice kind of pinkish highlights which i thought were pretty sweet the hands are a weird one because the way they've been molded you can't quite straighten them out i mean it looks like this piece wants to end up inside that hollow gap but they just can't go in there because the way they've molded it this tab stops it i'm pretty certain if i took a dremel i could probably fix it but this figure is way too old to be messing around with so i think i'm going to give that a pass and he also has an asymmetrical design here for the shin so you can see this one's kind of battle damaged i imagine he's in search of repairs or he's just scrambled what he can to try and fix that leg up but still keeps the triple exhaust on either side which is sweet and then we get the toes which create for a very simplistic transformation yet one that is rather effective now articulation we do get a nice head swivel albeit at a slight weird angle it would have been so awesome had they given him some jaw articulation and considering this is animated i'm quite surprised that they didn't we get some nice ball joints here out of the shoulders they can also go out to the side due to transformation really nice kind of ball joint here at the elbow and kind of a double joint due to transformation which is cool nothing out of the wrist besides the transformation joint we do get a sick waist rotation that is so awesome the hips can kick forwards that far so you know you can have him kicking ratchet up the backside trying to take more of his weapons they can also kick back to that far out to the sides we do get a little joint here out of the knee i mean that's not great it's unfortunate that it can't bend to at least 90 but i mean it's okay and then finally we come to the feet which to be fair are pretty static besides this tiny bit of toe pivot due to transformation so i guess i can kind of understand collector's criticism in regards to articulation but for an older figure not too bad at all but it only gets better so let's talk weaponry lockdown was a bounty hunter and as you guys all know he needed weapons in order to hunt and he needed trophies so hasbro gave him just that those in the form of this hunting hook which did actually carry over to live action which is really sick you can see this is formed out of the front part of the vehicle which i thought was kind of cool sick metallic silver that looks really cool and basically you just take the hand transform it inwards and it looks like the forearm has converted into this weapon so you just snap it over the top and there you have locked down with that hunting hook really cool i mean again so sinister kind of reminds me of the candy man but you can also take ratchet's emp blaster and i think for transformation you basically just take the engine piece rotate this around and there is a tiny little switch there that is going to put a bit of pressure on that tab and it should cause the EMP to automatically transform and fire into action, which I thought was really awesome. And now we've transformed that back. It does reveal a few additional details as well as paint. And yeah, overall, lockdown looking really awesome. I hope to see this guy in Transformers Legacy. That would be just so cool. I'm hoping the rumors are true. And whilst we're looking at the front of the figure, check out that back. No back kibble. These animated figures definitely were in a league of their own, but they also added an additional gimmick. So like I said, the MP was brutally stolen from Ratchet in combat and you can give it back to him. So Ratchet does have this port here on the side of his arm. 
that if you have the EMP, you can wriggle it, nick it off of lockdown, and smack it back on Ratchet. Although it doesn't fit Ratchet nowhere near as nicely as it does on Lockdown, but he does hold it, and yeah, that's pretty cool. I like the cross compatibility between the two figures, and I like how the storytelling aspects of the show carried over into the toys. That's pretty sweet. And for some comparisons in robot mode, we have animated Lockdown compared alongside his live action movie counterpart, the Studio Series Age of Extinction version. And despite them being more along the lines of the same scale in vehicle mode, I mean, check out the mass shifting that goes on with this old animated deluxe. What was scaling back in 2008 2009 as by today's standards no way would this thing be a deluxe it would be a voyager or probably even a leader honestly i wouldn't put it past hasbro but in terms of a design it's a shame that more traits weren't carried over from the original source material for live action it's basically just the hook which is similar other than that you really wouldn't be able to tell they were the same character another thing which i also thought was kind of sweet is that they also kind of carried over the storytelling from animate in the live action movies i mean lockdown goes after ratchet in kind of the opening scene for age of Extinction and Nyx, I think it was his EMP blaster, so, or maybe it was his spark. I don't quite remember, but still, pretty cool they carried that over, and in terms of another comparison, here he is alongside Deluxe Class Ratchet from the same toy line, so again, much bigger than this, which is still a huge Deluxe Class. Here he is alongside, I think, the biggest deluxe figure we've seen in recent years, that being Studio Series 86, Perceptor, and I can't even remember the last time we saw a deluxe that was this big. If you guys know, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below, but it has got to be a figure from either Hunt for the Decepticons, Revenge of the Fallen, or it may have even been from the animated toy line. Here he is alongside the actual Voyager animated Optimus Prime, so massive difference in terms of scale. This is a deluxe class, and this is a Voyager class. And rounding things off, here we have him alongside the leader slash Voyager Earthrise Optimus Prime. And wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Animated Deluxe Class Lockdown, I continue to be impressed by these figures. You know, this is a 15-year-old release and still holds up impeccably well. I mean, even if we were to see an updated version of this design in Transformers Legacy, sadly, I just don't think it would be as good as the original, as these figures were top tier. The vehicle mode looks insane with all those serrated edges and blades sticking here, there, and everywhere. Now, granted, you probably have to give props to the original character design team from the show, but it just translated so nicely into a toy. Transformation, not too difficult at all and again results in a killer looking animated robot mode some of these figures are just insanely accurate to the series articulation isn't bad for a figure which came out in 2008 2009 and i like the cross compatibility of the emp blaster between this figure and the deluxe class ratchet so that was pretty cool and in terms of a recommendation honestly guys out of all of the animated figures i've reviewed so far i think it's ratchet blitzwing and now this guy he is by far the best one i've checked out so if you can find a decent one on the aftermarket definitely pick it up or Maybe check out that Revenge of the Fallen live action movie version as it's basically this design just with a ton load more surface detail which to be honest looks a little cooler than this which is crazy considering this looks nuts as it is. I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know what animated figure you guys would like me to take a look at next and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.